By the time this video is finished, you will have a better understanding of water leaks that happen in homes where copper water lines are installed under a concrete slab. Some of you may know from experience that this is a much more common problem than we might think. There are lots of reasons probably why a copper pipe might begin to leak over time, which is not the purpose of this video to go into. But when it happens, it's a huge problem. So this video explores what you can do to get things back to normal as quickly as possible. Most of the time it seems to be a hot water line that leaks, which shuts down the flow of hot water to the house until the problem is fixed. Now, that's a pretty big deal in most households. This is a real life situation that happened in a real home where two leaks occurred over a 15 year span. The second leak occurred a couple of months ago, so I have some real footage of that repair. I also have a 3D version of this house, as you can see. And then this will be where I explain what happened 15 years ago when the first leak occurred and how we dealt with that back then. See, so there's, that's what we abandoned. So this is, should be the cold side right there. See, and then the hot coming from yeah. the top of the... So you want to... Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you're wondering why there's a water line in the wall that's been cut, that's behind a finished wall, it's because about 15 years ago there was a leak in this line under the concrete slab that came from the hot water heater and supplied hot water to the rest of the house that is owned by my brother-in-law Pete and sister-in-law Chrissy. The way we knew there was a leak was because from the hot water outlets in the two back bathrooms, there was a significant drop in water pressure when they were turned on and you could hear the sound of a leak somewhere under the slab. But when you're just looking at the slab itself, only knowing that pipes are under the floor and come up in the walls somewhere, it's a pretty good challenge to figure out where the water is leaking, much less trying to come up with a plan to fix it. If we strip the concrete out here and go back to when this house was originally built about 50 years ago, it starts to make a little bit more sense. The red hot pipe is actually a representation of the leaking hot water line and where it was potentially leaking from. Back when this problem first happened, we were able to come up with a pretty good and accurate understanding of how the house was originally piped. This is the utility room and the pipes coming up over there in that wall are hot and cold water lines for the washing machine. The pipes coming toward us run to the kitchen sink. As we look at the layout with the concrete back in place, beyond pinpointing the leak, determining how to fix it was the big challenge. Probably the most common way to fix a leak that's under the slab is to have plumbers come in and jackhammer out the concrete, remove the dirt until they find water, and hopefully then a pipe and a leak location are close by. The problem with this approach is that you destroy the concrete and whatever else is on top of it whether that's tile, carpet, or maybe wood flooring. You also make a huge mess in the living areas of your home. It's also possible that you get one leak fixed and another one shows up sometime later, so you start this process all over again. So if there are other options to get your water back in service, it's something to think about. But again, time is the issue and you want to get the leak fixed quick. Before we cut the pipe in the wall, we had to know if the leak was between here and this hall bathroom, or was it between here and the second bathroom at the back of the house. So we cut a hole in the wall under the vanity and capped that line coming from the utility room. After turning the water back on, we could hear water running under the floor. That meant the leak was still between here and the utility room. If we could not hear the leak when we turned the water back on, then we would know the leak was actually between here and the shower in this back bathroom, which would require more effort to fix. We quickly decided that we were not going to open up the slab to try to fix this, but instead we would run a new copper line from the hot water heater in the garage through the roof trusses to this location in the wall under the hall bath sink. Boy, how nice that would have been to get up on a roof that doesn't have any decking on it to run this line through the attic space. But that wasn't the case. 
So we had to get up in the ceiling through the attic access hole here in the garage and figure a way to thread this pipe in 10 foot joints across to the hall bath. Starting here at the hot water heater, there is a main shutoff for the water supply coming from the street. In the wall, the cold water supply branches off to supply the house with the cold water supply that it needs. A cold water line goes up the wall and into the inlet fitting on top of the hot water heater. As water is heated, it exits the hot water heater and runs inside the wall and under the slab. This branch goes to the utility room and kitchen sink and this branch, as we know, goes to the bathrooms. To get our new line going in the ceiling, we cut this pipe and add a T. So now the bottom part of this hot water line goes to the utility room and kitchen sink, and the top part is going to the hall bath. While this isn't the exact replica of the wood framing by any means, it felt like this, as I recall, except that we had roll insulation spread out everywhere and blown insulation on top of that as well in this space. Trying to route the copper through this maze of wood was a task. Since we were using 10 foot joints of copper, and at that time I wasn't comfortable using the Sharp Bite brand fittings to connect the pipe, I soldered all these fittings in place in the attic, which is something I would not recommend, particularly now with all the other options available. Fortunately, I didn't burn the house down. So once the new supply line was extended to the bathroom, we needed to drill a hole in the top plates of the wall so that the three quarter inch supply line could be fed through that hole and then soldered in place. All that was needed now was to close off this T by soldering a cap on it. Once we turned the hot water on at the water heater, everything was pressurized once again and the problem was solved for these back bathrooms. By the way, these pipes in my rendering are all three quarter inch diameter. What really happens in the real world is that at various points in the pipe layout, the size gets reduced down to half inch lines for the purpose of coming out the walls and having three eighths angle stop shutoff valves installed. For my illustration, I stuck with one size of pipe. Now it's been forward 15 years and a few months ago, my sister-in-law Chrissy came out into the garage to investigate the hot water heater making a very loud and strange swishing sound again. No hot water outlets were flowing anywhere in the house, but clearly the water was running somewhere. Well, if it were leaking from the repairs we made 15 years ago, water would be running out of the ceiling and it would be obvious where the leak was. So the likely alternative was that the hot water lines which remained pressurized under the slab somewhere was now leaking. The way the video started was me cutting this section of sheetrock out again so that we could remember what we did. That's good, Pete. Shut it off? Yeah, you can turn it off, yes. As we looked at it for a bit, uh, it was likely that the leak was under the slab and it seemed like it was probably here in the utility room because the floor underneath this area here, felt warm. So there was now a second right. leak yeah. in the original the copper way. under uh, the slab. Yeah, exactly. I believe is what you did. It didn't seem like a good idea to try to salvage the piping under the slab, so instead of standing around and wasting a lot of time, we made the decision to load up and go get some materials to repipe around this leak again. And this time we would now cut this section of pipe out and go back up into the ceiling with a second supply line, this time using PEX. When we made that decision, it allowed us to solve the problem of no hot water in the bathrooms rather easily. By cutting the line to the utility room and kitchen sink and capping it off from the hot water heater, the hot water could be turned back on to the bathrooms and they would be fully functional with hot and cold water as we worked on the rest of the repiping. Here's what we did. After simply cutting this line that is the main hot water supply source and bringing it through the wall into the garage, we turned it up to run through the ceiling. Oh yeah, there you go. Here we put on a shutoff valve as well. By keeping that valve turned off while we worked, hot water was still flowing to the bathrooms through our 15 year old repair. You want me to push it out? When we had run the rest of the piping for the utility room and kitchen sink, the last connection we made was the PEX line to this shutoff valve. Turning this on would restore water to the kitchen and utility room once those installations were complete. Open up a the process to get hot water flowing to the bathrooms only took us a couple of hours to do uh, you know, after I mean, we figured out what we had done with the first leak. 
Pete initially called a lead detection company to see when possibly they could come out and give us an idea as to what help they might be able to be. It was a Friday in the middle of winter when this happened, and the earliest that they could come out was maybe Tuesday. There was going to be a $500 charge just to show up and try to locate the leak. The cost of actually doing the repair was pretty much unknown at that time if the leak detection people were to do the work. So with the understanding that we had about how the hot water was flowing under the slab and some effort on our part, we were able to save a lot of money and did not have Pete and Chrissy be in a situation of being without hot water for up to a week in winter. The total cost of the PEX and the fittings uh, that we bought was under $200. Now I had all the tools we needed and we had plenty of manpower with the help of family friend Bob uh, who helped us out as well. But we actually finished the whole hot water repair by Saturday afternoon, which was one full day of work from the time the leak was discovered. And all Pete needed to do was to repair some sheetrock, retexture, and paint, which he is actually really quite handy at doing. All right, so here's how we ran the PEX. We needed a transition from three quarter inch copper to one half inch PEX. I soldered up this group of fittings to accomplish that. We did use a Shark Bite brand push-on connector, which was a 90 degree L to install my soldered part onto the 3 quarter inch supply copper line. The reason I didn't solder it on was because this gas line is close to where it was being installed, and though in all likelihood it would have been fine, at this stage of my life I'm really a very much better safe than sorry type of person. I didn't want to get the torch anywhere near this gas line. So yes, the push-on fitting did the trick and is working great. Hopefully it, you know, won't make weird noises and... You ready? Yep. It's That's a good, open. sounds good. Good sound, nothing mm -hmm. weird good. happening here. So if it's running, can I shut it yeah. off? Yeah. Uh -huh. That sound of the water turning on and then going silent is a good sound because that means that the hot water lines going back to the bathrooms are pressured up and the bathroom's water supply is back to normal. This PEX line connection is also pressured up and I'll keep an eye on it to make sure we don't have any leaks in my solder joints. So if we open this valve now, it will spray hot water all over the garage. We've added a piece of PEX pipe on top of this valve with a cap in it to make sure that if we accidentally knock this valve open while we're running the new PEX lines in the ceiling, we wouldn't make a mess in the garage. Most of our job now is to figure out how to best get a hot water line to the kitchen sink and also to the washing machine hookup, which is only a few feet from the water heater. Those are the only two remaining locations where we need hot water. As we start running the PEX now, we're going to go back up into the ceiling above the hot water heater with a new line that will run to a cabinet in the utility room where we'll drop it into the cabinet, back against the back wall, take it through that wall that separates the utility room from the kitchen, and come out behind the refrigerator. At that point, we will turn the piping down toward the floor and run it through the back of the base cabinets, working our way around the room until we get to the cabinet unit for the sink. Because of windows above the sink and a tile backsplash the full width of the kitchen, the approach we used to route the PEX made the most sense to keep it out of sight. We have 10 foot joints of PEX that we simply install coupling fittings in place between the joints to let us extend as far as we need to go. In order to run the water to the washing machine, we put a T in the line that we already have in the ceiling and routed that new piece of pipe over to the cabinet unit in the utility room above where the washing machine is, where we dropped the pipe into the back of that cabinet and then came out of the cabinet close to the hookups for the washing machine. So once shutoff valves were attached to the ends of our new PEX lines, Everything was ready to go, and all that remained was to turn on this valve to restore water to the utility room and the kitchen. 
Now, the really good side benefit of this is that now all the hot water lines are much more accessible than they were under the slab. And in the future, truthfully, it's very unlikely that in our lifetimes, the hot water lines will ever leak again. The only place potentially now that that could happen is in the section of pipe that runs between the hall bath and the back bath because that's the only section of hot water copper pipe that's still under the slab and still pressurized. About six years ago, I had a customer who had three leaks in their slab under their master bedroom. In two years, that flooded the entire bedroom each time. The third leak was about two feet from the second leak. That led to a complete repipe of their house of the cold and hot water lines abandoning everything under the slab. The house is a five bedroom and four bath home. And I ended up remodeling three of the four bathrooms in the process. Their actual job got Whoa. me started making YouTube videos. And Very here are nice. a couple of videos of projects I did on their job. It turned out that a lot of people are interested in building their own shower floors and installing barn doors. Oh, let me turn that on again. Do, do what? I'm gonna turn the water on here just oh. to... We got we had water off here. Yep. Okay. All right, that's all good. <laughs> 